Good morning, and this is the first of a set of videos, well, hopefully a set of videos, that I'll be making along in conjunction with Mitch Peacock from the Maidenwood Workshop over in the UK. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take some questions and comments from you, the viewers, whether it's either on YouTube or on Twitter, and we're going to go through the different ways to accomplish some of these common woodworking tasks that some people take for granted, but for a beginning woodworker, and even for an advanced woodworker, it can be difficult sometimes. Um, I'll be doing the power tool part of it, and Mitch will be doing the hand tools. And I'm going to show how I do it using power tools, and obviously Mitch with hand tools. And then there'll be a discussion about how there's the, the benefits and cons of each different method. So it should be a fun to watch, and uh, let's get to it. So the first part in this series, we're going to talk about how to take a piece of rough lumber and surface it four sides. I've chosen a particularly nasty piece of rough lumber here. It's curved, it's cupped, it's warped, it's basically a potato chip. And I'm going to show you how to get that into a usable piece of wood that you can use on your projects. Well, closer inspection on this board reveals a couple things. First of all, obviously it's rough sawn. There's mill marks from the band saw on it. It's definitely not straight. And it's got a nasty curve or a bow on the end. We're going to have to eliminate some of these things in order to get a piece of wood that's probably going to be about this long that I can get and actually use it for some parts. So the first thing I need to do is determine how thick I'm going to be able to get this. Now this board is a solid inch thick. <clears throat> when I get down to this end, since I've got this curve in it here, if I look at it and keep going down here, I'm not going to be able to get an inch all the way to the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this nasty curved part and it's just going to go into the wood pile. But I need to cut this first. Now what a lot of people will do is they will take a, and put this on their miter saw. I don't recommend that. I actually use a circular saw. You could also use a jigsaw. Let me show you how I determine where to cut and how to cut this. So as you can see, this really comes up over here. I know it's flat, well, relatively flat till about here. So I'm just going to take a piece of chalk. I'm going to mark that. Again, this is just a rough measurement. Now again, I like to use a circular saw. I can also use a jigsaw. I don't recommend doing this on a miter saw because when you have this, since it's not flat and square, when you hit that with the miter saw, it's going to release some tensions. You could get some kickback. So I've got this set up. This is where I always do it. I've got a place between my uh, work table and my outfeed table, and I've just got a small battery powered circular saw. I'm just going to make this cut. Well, here's the board after I cut that end off. Now, I've got it laid on my, my outfeed table. As you can see, there's a rock to it. When I flip it over, it's actually pretty stable. I'm going to be using as this as the start of my reference face. So that's going to be down. It's also concave here. You can see a little gap underneath here. Um, that's fine. When we get this, we're basically trying to make just a reference face on the joiner so that when we put it through the thickness planer, we get a parallel surface up on top here. We also have to take a look at this and be able to read the grain direction. So I'm going to take this over to my bench and we'll take a hand plane and we'll determine which way the grain is going on this. So with this board with probably the nicest edge facing up or the flattest edge facing up, I just want to take my hand plane and I'm going to do a lot of work here. I just want to see if I can get rid of some of this excess material on here so I can get a better idea of what the grain looks like. So let me zoom in a little bit here and show you what I'm working with. So really what I'm trying to determine here, and I always want to look at the edge grain. The face grain might not show me what I need to know. I'm trying to figure out which way the grain is going so when I put it through the joiner and the thickness planer, I don't create a lot of tear out. So unfortunately I picked a really bad board. The grain pattern on this is all over the place. For the most part though, as you can see it's going up this way. So that means if I take the run it through the face joiner and scoop it this way, I'm going to be going against the grain. So what I want to do is when it goes through, 
I want to go through on this side. So this is the direction that I want to feed this side through the joiner. So I'm over here at the joiner. I'm blessed enough to have an 8 inch model. That means I can face joint boards up to 8 inches wide on here. So when I put it on here, there's still a little bit of a rock. So that means when I put it through the joiner face down, I always want to keep pressure on that one side here and then back here on the same thing. I don't want to put a lot of pressure because I still might push the wood down because remember it's concave size down on this. The other thing to remember is that the joiner knives are the same level as the outfeed table. So technique is everything when you're face joining boards. So as you push it through, you have to remember that once it gets past the joiner knives, keep your pressure on the outfeed side, not necessarily on the in, on the in feed, but keep it on the outfeed side and push it through that way. That way you make sure that it's going to continue the reference face on the joiner knives. So let's go through this. So after about five or six passes on the joiner, this is what I'm left with. It's a very flat face. There's no rocking. When I pick it up, there's actually a little bit of suction as it goes down to the, to the bed of the joiner. So the next thing I need to do is now that I've got one reference face, which I know is completely flat, I want to take that face and put it up against the fence of my joiner. Now this has to be 90 degrees. Always make sure to check this ahead of time, which this one is, and I checked with a, with a nice square. So what I want to do is I will run that over here, keeping pressure against the fence now. And what that will do is create a perfectly perpendicular, a 90 degree edge right here. Now one thing that's going to happen when I do this, that's going to be on this side. Now I want to make sure that I'm always putting the grain or moving the board in that direction. So I'm going to lose that. So I'm just going to put another mark right here. And that's the way I'm always going to feed this board through the, through, through the joiner or the thickness planer. So let me get this edge jointed. So after about five or six passes over the joiner again, now I've got a nice perpendicular edge to my previously planed or jointed face. Now if I take a square, which I know is very accurate, and put it up against here, and sight down the board, I'm perfectly 90 degrees to that face to here. So now we need to go over to the thickness planer, and what we're going to do is referencing this face, we're going to remove the material from this side to get it parallel with this. I'm over here at the thickness planer, and this works a lot like the joiner, but there are a couple exceptions. What I want to do is I'm going to take the reference face that I made before on the joiner, I'm going to put this through, and that's going to lay flat against the table of the thickness planer. Now there's a set of knives in here, and what they'll do is they'll scoop away material on top of this till it's parallel with the bottom of the board. So I've got it set up right now where it's just kissing that. I'm going to lower it down. I'm taking off on this pass. It's going to be about 30 seconds, you know, heavy 30 seconds of material. So I'm going to put my hair protection on and we'll run it through. Now if you notice, I've also got the arrow which shows me which direction I need to push it through. first pass did not move, remove much material, I actually took just off a little bit from this side. So I will keep lowering this 
by a 32nd of an inch at a time, running it through till all the material here on top is smooth. Well, after about four or five passes through the joiner, what I'm left with is a smooth face here and a smooth face here. This piece is still about an inch thick. Yeah, 0.975. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue taking this down. Now, I don't want it to get it all the way down to the three quarter inches that I need right now. I'm going to take it probably down about 13 sixteenths of an inch. And I'll explain why when I'm done. So, first pass is going to be this way. And then after I push it through and take off another, that, that fat 30 second of an inch, I'm going to flip the board over end for end like this, then run it through again and keep flipping it over end for end until I'm down to that 13 sixteenths of an inch. So, I've got this board and it's right at 13 sixteenths of an inch, which is where I want to be. Now the reason I want to do that is, this board has been through a lot of trauma. I mean, I've, I've face jointed it, I've thickness planed it, I've edge jointed it. It's going to move. I've released some uh, tension in the board. The moisture content is going to change. I typically will mill wood up the weekend before I'm ready to use it or maybe even a couple weekends, but as I use the material, I get it down to its final thickness, uh, which in most cases is three quarters, sometimes it's an inch. So now that I've got one face, two faces completely parallel, and I know this is 90 degrees, what I need to do is make another cut that's going to be parallel to this face, and I'm going to do that at the table saw. I'm over here at the table saw, First thing I want to do is I want to raise the blade up so I can cut all the way through the piece of wood. I'm going to put my face down. Now remember, I'm 90 degrees. My blade is 90 degrees to my table. Again, I've got a reference face here. And actually, this is a reference face too because it went through the thickness planer. They're both perfectly parallel now. So I can set that down like that. Now what I need to do is determine what the thickest point on this board is actually the thinnest point on this board is. And it's down here at about six, five, actually five and three eighths. So to help with dust collection I like to keep a piece of wood as a cutoff uh, so the blade is completely encapsulated so sawdust doesn't fly everywhere. So if I've got five and three eighths, I'm going to go over an eighth and then an eighth inch on the blade. So I need to be six, or excuse me, five and one eighth. So I'm just going to set my fence to 5 and 1 eighth. I've got a push stick and I'm just going to run this piece through. <laughs> so after that last operation, what I'm left with is a board that's perfectly straight perfectly thickness, and also I have two parallel sides. But notice again, if I put my square up to this, I'm flat all the way along the side, and I should be that 5 and 1 8 inch down its width, which I am. So now what I've got is a perfectly surfaced four sides piece of wood. I hope you enjoyed this short demonstration of how I take a rough board and get it surface four sides using power tools that is. This isn't necessarily the best way or the only way to do it. This is just how I do it. I've been doing it this way for years and it's worked out very well for me. Now Mitch is going to show you how to do this with hand tools. And somewhere over here I'm going to leave a link to his video. So please click on it and see how he does it. And please leave comments below 
Uh, let us know what you think and also ideas for future videos. Thanks for watching.